What's up? I'm Cautious Clay, and you're hanging out with Rob at Front Row Live. You just did a new thing that I didn't even know existed, 12 Moods with Skull Candy. I didn't know that they were still like doing a big movement, big campaigns with musicians. Yeah. And you're one of the chosen ones. So like, how has this experience been like for you so far? Yo, it's been really chill, man. Like, I got here at like 11 a.m., yeah. and just we've just been like running through each part of it, and it's been like really just chill. We had like a little interview section, and then we just like had a performance and then just like played a couple songs yeah. yeah so when you first when you first got word of the 12 moves that they the campaign that they were doing like what was it about it that drew your attention made you want to be a part of it man well i mean i i've actually used skull candy before mm -hmm. so i was like oh cool like i'm an audiophile like i'm gonna right. get behind this and like the concept of it was like pretty cool like one of my friends uh, omar apollo mm -hmm. did it as well so i was just like oh word like i heard about it through him and then like my manager approached me about it, and I was like, it seemed right for me, yeah. I've seen a lot of like artists end up collaborating with um, these kind of headphone companies and you know, start designing their own type of headphones. Is that something that eventually you would like to see, like a venture that you would like to see in the future for yourself? Man, that's like, I feel funny about that, to yeah. be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, because like, there's a lot of people who have like their own pair of headphones, but I think like the sonics of it are the most important thing. Like. Right. Comfort, Sonics, and then like the look, you right. know? And like all three of those things are important, but like I feel like I would have too much stress about like the Sonics of it <laughs> to actually create a headphone that I was like happy with how it looks as well. And like, right. I don't know, like I'm gonna leave that to like other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now speaking of Sonics, you're, you're recently on tour like promoting yeah. um, your latest record, uh, Table of Contacts. You know, how different was it this time around coming into the studio and creating this body of work for you? It was interesting. Like, I, I didn't really do much differently than I had done in the past. Um, I kind of just felt like these songs were very much similarly, like, worked well together. Right. And the last two, like, projects, like, smaller EPs I did were very much, they kind of lived in, like, their own kind of package. And so I really just wanted to focus on a lot of the stuff that I had already done, but then just kind of like bringing it into like a new kind of feeling, like more acoustic guitars and kind of sparse productions, but also just like similarly having like my signature backing vocals and just like elements of like what makes me, me, you know, as an artist. Now when, I, when I put this, uh, this project next to Blood Type, like I feel like Blood Type was more, produ more production involved. Um, why did you kind of choose to like, you know, back down a little bit from production and, you know, it was more about your vocals, less about the production. Yeah, I feel like, like for me, I was just trying to explore, like so much of my voice and what I do with my voice is so new to me. Like, I, like if you can believe it, like I was just a producer less than three years ago. Yeah. So like, I'm just like, Blood Type was very much my first project where I was using my voice. So like, it's been such a long process for me to figure out what worked better for me as an artist right. and I feel like now I'm leaning into my voice a little bit more because it's like a confidence that I have with it that I didn't have even when blood type was made so like I just I feel like I'm just learning more about my own creative process right. as I'm doing it as you were as you were making blood type like how did you kind of discover your sound or your voice like what what were some of the like key f like features that you noticed that you know made you realize okay this is the kind of artist I am Man, I think the key features for me were just like the like the drums, mm. but then also like my melody choices okay. and then the lyrics, like all of it, I think is, and I just think those are three like very broad things, right. but I feel like I, I really think about them all very carefully and how they work together. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think what kind of sets me like in my own kind of way is just like my melodies and my harmonies. Okay. Like I love toying with that and like how I produce my, my music and how I create it so um, yeah I'm gonna always have a place for that now, three years ago like you mentioned earlier you were just a producer yeah. um, and then you know I first found out about you because of a collaboration you did with uh, Petit Biscuit which is another yeah. producer so in working with another producer like that like how how did that impact the way that you create your music today Man, I guess it just kind of made me open to how other producers work and other artists work. Yeah. Uh, because like for so long I was just like 
doing it on my own that I was like, oh, well, like, there's no point in me, like, collaborating with anyone. Right. Which I feel like I was, like, I learned that in a lot of ways it's, like, important to collaborate. It's just, like, also knowing what you want to take away from that collaboration. It's more about, that's, that's I think, what's more important than right. anything because everyone's going to be learning and trying to create new things, you know. You know, like, there's plenty of people I know who can produce, but, like, they're not, like, you know, they can get stale, you yeah. know what I mean? So you just want to just, like, keep inventing inventing and when you work with petite for for wake up that was uh his track yeah. you know did you guys get to work in the studio together is this something that you guys had to do like over like on through online yeah so we actually we actually worked on that um like online yeah so that was something that i he sent me um and then i messed around with it and then um this other artist uh bipolar sunshine right. uh basically kind of like reworked it and did his his own thing with it but I had kind of just been starting out like I don't even think Cold War was out at that point yeah. so it was kind of like a funny process how it came together <laughs> but um but yeah no it was it was all online now talk to me a little more about Table of Contacts um you know as you were creating this you were in the studio how did you kind of challenge yourself this time you know we you stripped it down a little bit from the production but how else did you kind of challenge especially like your vocals yeah, I really like, I really just focused on like, yeah, the vocal production in a different way. Um, I think the harmonies were still a huge part of it, but I think I might have backed off a little bit from like some of the larger harmonies in certain sections. Um, but I guess like I really just challenged myself from a writing standpoint. Like I think songs like Sidewinder and Something for Nothing like have drums in them, but they're like very minimal drums. Um, and it's more just focused on like the structure of the songs that I'm creating. So I've just really focused a lot more on the songwriting aspect than I did when I was working on Blood Type, which I think I still had a songwriting aspect to it, but I felt like my exploration was a little bit like, less heavy in that direction. Now, a song like uh, Honest Enough, yeah. um, that one I felt like throughout the whole track you were using head voice throughout yeah. the whole entire time. Yeah. How, do you, how do you do something like that? Is that something that you, know, you challenge yourself to do it on that track specifically? Have you done that before? I'd never done that before, but I was just trying different stuff out. And uh, I guess I was just blessed to have a good voice. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, I don't really think about it, but then like, yeah. I, I've also just been able to like, I've taken some vocal lessons recently and figuring out how to properly like take care of it and also like use it in a way that's smart because I'm like going to be touring and like I'm singing a lot more than I ever have so um yeah to be honest with you I was just I was just just trying something out man like I don't know yeah. I just tr I just like to try stuff easy that was the thing too like you're listening to it and you don't you don't even hear like you're struggling it's just like super smooth throughout oh man yeah <laughs> I, there's no secrets I just I don't know man I just got lucky so you tend to you tend to go from singing on your live shows, you tend to go from singing to, you know, hitting the saxophone and then back to singing. Like, how are you able to transition that, especially when you're doing it live? Man, I mean, like, it's something that, I mean, they're different muscles, which is helpful. A lot of the stuff in the saxophone is in the lips. And then my throat is, like, really where a lot of the use is going to be at for, for, uh, for vocals. So in a lot of cases, like, transferring from the flute to the voice is a little more harder than from the saxophone to the voice. Okay. Just because of like how those two instruments work, not to get a little too much in the weeds, but um, yeah, no, it's it it's cool. Like I'm just used to it. I've been playing sax and flute for like a decade, so it's like those instruments are like pretty straightforward for me. Um, but yeah, I just like to express myself. When uh, creating this EP as well, uh, like, did you have any like a different team behind it uh, as opposed to Blood Type? No, same team. Same yeah, team. same. Like, it's just me, my manager, and then I have a publicist as well um, who's working on it. And then, um, yeah, and then just just my band. But, like, I kind of bring them in and out whenever, right. whenever it's appropriate. But, um, yeah, in general, it's me producing, and then I mix it, and then have a guy who masters it. And then, uh, and then I just put, I, I put it out through my own, like, through TuneCore, distributing through that. It's all independent too, like it's crazy. Independent, yeah. I, I recently like had just 
to sign a, a deal, distribution deal, but it's kind of like, it still like kind of frees me up to be in an independent, like from a releasing standpoint. Right. So yeah, it's yeah, it's been pretty cool. That's sick. Now, in advance of, of the EP dropping, like you, you had mentioned that a part of this record was kind of like being worked on tour with your guitarist. Yeah. Um, so, is that something that it was the first time that you did something like that for a record? Yeah, it was. It, Blood Type was like pretty much like all of me on guitar, except for except for Cold War. Cold War was the only one where I had another guitar player who was involved. Um, but now that I've been working with my guitar player, shout out Chris Kyle, um, more often, like we just kind of have a flow, you know, with how things are working. And so like when I've written a song and I play the guitar on it and I'm just like, well, I could play it, but like he plays it better. Right. So I just like, I just like put him, like, I like incorporate him into like how it sounds. Right. For those that are not familiar with you, like, why did you why did you choose music as your career, and what is it about music that keeps you doing whatever it takes to get to that next level? Man, I guess it's really like, I, I mean, like, I just always choose music because it's the easiest thing for me to do. Like, it's the strongest intuition that I have in my life. Um, I really like other stuff. Like, I, I was really into geography. I was really into like anthropology and culture and stuff like that but I felt like music was always the easiest thing for me to just gravitate towards. And I've always been kind of a silly creative person. And like, I, I, I draw so many different derivative ideas of whether it's visual or musical. So it just like being an artist, even, even over a musician, like was more important for me than anything because there's a lot of musicians that I know who couldn't be artists. So it's really just like, yeah, I just love to create and be creative.